So this is our final video for the week. Uh, we've already talked about kind of everything related to maximum likelihood estimation itself. But now we're gonna talk about an additional tool that we're gonna use when we're actually conducting maximum likelihood estimation, and that is numerical optimization. So for most structural estimation, we're gonna to have to either maximize or minimize some objective function. For maximum likelihood, which we're talking about this week, we wanna maximize the log likelihood function. Uh, we'll see in GMM and in kind of some of our simulation-based estimation down the road, we'll, we'll have kind of similar kinds of objective functions that we're wanting to either maximize or minimize. So in theory, this is a simple proposition. Uh, some optimization problems have a closed form expression. All the examples we looked at this week had closed form expressions. We don't even need numerical optimization in that case. But as things get more complicated, we might not have real closed form expressions. Uh, in that case, if you only have one or two parameters, sometimes just a simple grid search will survive, suffice. You can just say, let's try tons of parameter values and see which one maximizes the log likelihood function. If, if computation's fast, you only have one or two parameters, that's, that's certainly doable. But in practice, finding those correct parameters, the maximum likelihood estimators in this case, in an efficient way can be challenging. And this is especially true when you're optimizing over a vector of many parameters and using a complex objective function. And we'll see examples of this next week when we start applying maximum likelihood to the logit model. And in this case, numerical optimization algorithms can solve this problem for us. The basic idea here is that we wanna find the set of K parameters, which we'll call theta hat, that maximize some objective function, lowercase l. In the case of maximum likelihood, that's the log likelihood function, but I'm writing this down even more general so we could think about any objective function. This is, this is not describing maximum likelihood, this is describing some broader set of problems where we just wanna, wanna maximize an objective function. What we do, we start with some initial parameter values. Let's call these theta zero, not to be confused with the theta zero we had earlier, which were the true parameters. So I put it in the superscript instead of the subscript. Start from those parameter values and check if you can kind of like walk up to a higher value of your objective function. Can you move those parameters around in a way that's going to make your objective function get larger? And if so, then take a step in that right direction to some new parameters called theta one. And then keep repeating two and three over and over again, stepping from theta s to theta, theta s plus one until you reach the maximum. That's the basic idea. We just keep trying things, moving in the right direction until we get to a point where we realize we're at the peak, we're done. But there's a couple of underlying questions here. Uh, which direction should you take? Uh, should you step in and how big of a step you should take? And these are important questions because if your steps are too small, optimization can take a really long time. And if you're doing something complex, it might already be long and you don't need to prolong what's already a long estimation procedure. Conversely, if your steps are too big, then you may never converge. You could just kind of keep jumping back and forth and, real, and just keep missing that maximum that you actually want to hit because you're, you're taking too big of a step. Whereas if you took a smaller step, um, it'd be fine. So we're gonna use two statistical objects to help us with this, the gradient and the Hessian. The gradient is the vector of K elements that's gonna tell us which direction to move each parameter in. And it's just the derivative of our objective function with respect to, to each parameter. And so that's basically gonna tell us does the first parameter need to get bigger or smaller? Does the second parameter need to get bigger or smaller? It's gonna tell us which way to move things in. And the Hessian, if you remember from an earlier video this week, the Hessian is that second derivative object. It's gonna be this K by K square matrix that gives us the information about the curvature. And so that's gonna tell us how big of a step we should take. If things are pretty flat in one direction, we might wanna take a big step. If things are pretty curvy though, we might wanna take a small step. If things are changing quickly, then we don't want to go very fast. If things are changing very slowly, we want to take a big jump though. That's the basic intuition there. Of course, there are a lot of ways that we can apply the gradient and the Hessian, sometimes even other statistics or constraints. We can apply those in different ways to, to maximize the objective functions. 
uh, to maximize the objective function. Here's a list of like 10 different ways that we can do that. Um, different, you know, different people have come up with different, different algorithms that each have pros and cons associated with them. Uh, the textbook mentions a few of these. Um, when we're actually doing this in practice in R, there's going to be a couple we're going to use. In particular, BFGS and Nelder Mead are going to be a couple of common ones. Um, I don't want to go into the details of any of these in particular. I just wanted to point out that there are a lot of different algorithms out there that help you with numerical optimization. You're, depending on your problem, one of these will be better than the others, but it's sometimes difficult to determine which that will be. And, and some of these are just names that you'll see floating around when you look at, at the optimization function in R, for example. And I just wanted you to be familiar with the fact that they, they are things that exist that, that you're going to run into. So that when you see BFGS somewhere, you at least have in mind, oh yeah, that's one of those algorithms. All right, the final step of, of, of this uh, optimization though was to stop when we reach our maximum. But that raises the question, how do we know that the model has actually converged? How do we know when we can top, stop taking steps? And in theory, the gradient vector equals zero is the condition we want to apply. We want to get, when the gradient equals zero, we know we've hit a place where we can't move in any direction and get better. We're going to get, get worse if we move in any direction. But in practice, uh, you, you can never, numerically, you can never precisely hit that vector of parameters all the way down to like the 15th decimal point that the computer will calculate. You can never hit that precisely and get a gradient of zero. So instead, we want to keep working until, in, until we get close enough. And so now we have to define what we mean by close enough. And the idea here is that we're going to calculate some statistic. Let's call it M superscript S at every single step. So we're going to calculate this thing every time we take a step, every iteration of that optimization procedure. It's going to be a function of the gradient and the Hessian. The math here isn't super important, but I wanted to write it down anyway. And then the idea is that we, uh, we start with some predetermined tolerance level in mind. And once that statistic gets smaller than that predetermined tolerance level, we stop. We say basically, we're going to keep going until we get to a point where our steps only improve us by so much or less. And when we get to that point, we're going to say, you know, if our improvement is going to be that small, let's just say we're close enough. And that's the idea here, is that at every one of these steps, um, the algorithm is going to be determining, am I at a place where I'm kind of close enough to what feels like the maximum that I should stop? And it's going to be applying some kind of convergence criterion like this. Some of those algorithms use slightly different convergence criterion, but this is the basic idea. There's one more concept I want to introduce though, and that's the, 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 the concept of global maximum or local maximum. A global maximum is the largest value of the objective function over all possible parameter values. And this is the maximum that you want your algorithm to converge to. You want to find the maximum, the most, the greatest value that you can hit. Or in the case of minimization, the lowest value that you can hit. You can, you can do either, go either way. And what's nice is that when the object, uh, objective function is globally con concave, which is true with a logit model with linear utility, we're going to get to more complex models that aren't, but when it is globally concave, you will always hit the global maximum. Your function will just always, your, your algorithm will always take you to the global maximum, no matter what. But the global maximum contrasts with the local maximum. This is, the local maximum is the largest value of the objective function within some local range of parameters, but it's not the global maximum. So sometimes your objective function can be kind of like lumpy, I guess is one way to say it. If it's not, not globally concave, then it could be that it hits a maximum, comes back down, and then goes back up again later on. One problem is that sometimes you can get stuck at that lower peak because no matter if you get into that section of the parameter space, the gradient and the Hessian are going to push you towards that local maximum and not towards the global maximum. This is, this is 
a classic problem with, with optimization, optimization algorithms is that sometimes you can get pushed to these local maxima instead of the global maximum. So it's just something to be aware of. One way that you can deal with this is to just try different starting values, different algorithms to ensure that you keep converging to the same place. And, 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 and as you keep converging to the same place, you can be more and more sure that that is a, the global maximum and not a local maximum. So there's, there's not like a, you know, a super scientific way that I know of to do this. It's kind of one of these cases where we're getting into more of an art than a science of making sure that our, our objective function is finding a global maximum instead of a local maximum. So that's what I've got for numerical optimization. The rest of the slides here are gonna be working through some examples of maximum likelihood estimation in R. We're gonna talk through those in class, but you can also look through the code uh, and the slides here on your own if you'd like.